they're going to keep having high hopes until the moment we cannot work anymore. Days after the condo collapse in Surfside, Florida, the community is not giving up. We're with you with tremendous love and care. We're here to serve you. Nine bodies have been found. Tonight, we know the names of eight of those victims. We have a lot of families that live there and a lot of friends that live there and family friends that live there. And what we saw from the beginning was a huge cloud of smoke. And it was by far the most horrific thing that I've seen. You know, all this energy of this acceptance and um, denial, acceptance and loss. But I know that in my heart, uh, most probably in heaven now. While hope still lives, a deep sense of loss is sinking in. The hardest thing that we're going to do over the next day or two is tell Ray Scarlett about <laughs> Grandma. That's the hardest thing. <laughs>Tonight, search and rescue crews are not giving up. Right now, they are going through the rubble in Surfside looking for survivors. You're watching 10 Tampa Bay this weekend. I'm Courtney Robinson. And crews have been working around the clock in 12-hour shifts. Tonight, 152 people remain unaccounted for. Nine bodies have been found. Of those, eight have been identified and family members have been told. Crews are searching methodically and it takes time. They're also using large machines to clear the rubble from the top and tunnel below it as well. There are teams from across the country now on the ground. They are in place ready to help. Family and friends of the missing remain hopeful. Buses took families to an open area near the building to give them a chance to grieve and to pray. During a Sunday morning church service, a priest read the names of people who have not been found. Some family members say they're also frustrated that rescue operations are not moving quickly. Our thoughts are with the, 100, the families of the 152 who remain missing tonight, and of course, with the nine who have been identified. You've seen, you can see their photos right here, and I wanna take a moment to remember each of them. Some were only in their 20s, others here in their 80s. Conditions have been difficult for the search crews. Between poor weather, fires inside the rubble, and the danger of the building and 30-foot pile shifting, this morning teams had a close call when the structure started to shake. Crews evacuated until it settled. Part of the efforts have gone toward cutting a 40-foot deep trench into the remains of the collapse. Florida's chief financial officer says this is the largest non-hurricane deployment in Florida history. More than 370 urban search and rescue personnel are there. Rescuers say the mental toll of the operation is another exhaustive factor. It's overwhelming a little bit. I mean, it, there's a lot of pressure on us because we want the outcome to be spectacular. We want to a find, miracle. We want to find someone. Task Force 3, a special operations team from Hillsborough County, is at work right now. We checked in with them tonight. One team has been working in a bucket brigade, sifting through all of this rubble. They'll take a break at midnight, and a second team from Hillsborough County will take over. The crew will be there for seven days. Many of you are also asking what you can do. We've received calls asking about how to help or where to donate. 10 Tampa Bay's Madison Allworth shows you some verified fundraisers and how this money will be used. As crews dig and search for hope, hundreds wait for news about their loved ones. Like Mike Noriega, my his grandmother Hilda is still missing. She's 92 years old, going on 62 years old. Uh, she's just so full of energy and she just loves people. In recent days, the news from rescue efforts has been more bad than good. More reports of remains than survivors. The community is stepping up to provide support. Support Surfside is a hardship fund for those directly impacted by the collapse. The Miami Tragedy Central Emergency Fund has already raised over $1 million to help victims and their families rebuild after everything fell apart. And GoFundMe has verified fundraisers for individuals and families that are legitimate. Each page shares the story of a missing loved one a family searching for their father after the others were pulled from the rubble, and a fundraiser to help two kids whose parents are both still missing. 
As friends and family wait for answers, help is also being provided in other ways. Boracuas de Corazon and their therapy dogs are working with anxious loved ones at the community center. One of the reasons is because they have a panic attack after they receive news or um, anxiety problems. And we are being able to let them, you know, working with the dog, touching the dog, getting that emotions out. Those who are still waiting for good news were moved to a hotel closer to the collapsed building. And they were told they might see disturbing images as crews continue the recovery process, searching through the rubble. Donating online comes with a risk. How do you know your money's going where you want it to? Here are some tips and tricks for spotting fakes and verifying legit charities. There are some really good online tools that will check for you. There's Charity Navigator, the Better Business Bureau, GuideStar, and Charity Watch, all great sites that will help you check to make sure a charity is valid before you give them your money. Something else to think about, be wary of claims that 100% of donations will assist victims or relief efforts. Despite what an organization organization might say, charities do have fundraising and administrative costs. They have that overhead cost. Even a credit card donation will involve, at a minimum, a processing fee. And in some cases, you can actually add that onto your donation and cover it.